So with the news yesterday that Wendy Williams was diagnosed with dementia and aphasia, a lot of people are now speculating on the timing of that news. Well, it was just revealed by TMZ last night that Wendy Williams' guardian is suing A&E, the distributor of Lifetime, and they are trying to stop this two-part documentary from being released. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So this story of Wendy Williams and the saga over the last three years has been something that we've covered endlessly. Well, now the news with this documentary coming out is just more and more information coming out. So, yesterday on The View, Wendy's niece, who if you've followed Wendy a long time, Wendy has viewed Alex Finney as her, almost like her own daughter. It was like her first kid. And, and it's also her goddaughter. Well, she did a few different interviews yesterday, including The View. She also did something else with um, ABC in regards to this documentary. So she's out here promoting the documentary. It should be noted that the family, specifically Alex, is not being paid to promote this documentary. But her intention is to get the story out there. Because if you saw our initial report on this documentary, we told you that the filmmaker behind this documentary, originally, they wanted to sort of film this comeback for Wendy and this new podcast. But it ended up turning, to be, turning out to be a story about her mental health, her physical health, and the New York State system of guardianship. Well, after she did The View, and she talked about how well her, her aunt was doing, but she also blasted the guardianship for not communicating with, with them. So she can call us, but we can't call her. So for instance, yesterday I was out, you know, I was having dinner and I, I missed a call. And I went to the bathroom and I came back and I realized that it was my aunt. Oh. But I can't call her back. So therefore, can I haven't talked her? to her. Can I can't write. Can if, I, if I try to call, I am told that there's nobody here by that, by that name. Oh. She went into uh, where she is now between April and May of last year. We went months before we were finally even able to get a call. I, I was saying this story yesterday. I was sitting in a nail salon in Miami and I got a call from a block number and I answered it. And she was like, hi, Alex. I said, oh. Aunt Wendy, we were on the phone for four hours and 37 minutes mm -hmm. because I hadn't heard for her in, from her in months. And that was the reality. I don't remember who got off the phone first, but it was that feeling of like, when I get off the phone with you, I don't know if I'm going to hear from you again. So I'll wait until you say, OK, I got to go by. Yeah. And you how know? is she doing now? She sounds really good. And I think that that honestly has been probably one of the best parts about being here and talking about this now because it's so heavy. But she's sounds really good. I haven't seen her, mm -hmm. um, but we are able to have full conversations. She's excited about her future. Um, you know, she talks about the possibility of getting back to work. But like I always remind her, first and foremost is your health. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. She says that there were times when birthdays, holidays, even when Wendy's own father was ill and they wanted to get in contact with Wendy and they couldn't. With this particular garden, we don't know the name, I guess. We don't know so, the name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any contact with them and do you think they are properly taking care of her? Um, in terms of the contact that I've had, uh, it's been limited. Um, I finally got some sort of a response not too long ago, um, but that has been a big problem for yeah. the family in terms of just can we get an update on how she's doing? And, and I say this honestly, and that is, we went through birthdays. We went through the holidays. We went through illness. You know, there was a period of my grandfather was in the hospital. I shared this story with yeah. you yesterday. Yeah. There was no way to contact her and let her know what was going on with her 93-year-old father. So after yesterday, we did the report that the news came out that Wendy Williams had been diagnosed with dementia and aphasia. I started just paying attention. I watched this interview with her niece, and at the end of the interview, they ended up doing an update, letting people know that the caretakers, the people that are in charge of Wendy Williams' care, had released a statement stating that Wendy Williams had been diagnosed with dementia and aphasia. 
which led me to believe, because a lot of people are questioning, why didn't Alex bring this up in any of the interviews? I'm to believe Alex had no idea. We have to keep in mind that the family has has been pushed out of any sort of care when it comes to Wendy Williams. They have no control over her health care. They have no control over her money. And they don't want any control over her money, but they would like to have a say in, in regards to Wendy's health. Again, they have no idea where she's located. They can't communicate with her. They have to wait for Wendy to contact them. Well, then, after we did this report, and after I said something is fishy about the timing of the release of this, of this information, because the timing to me was suspicious because I felt like they were trying to release this information to discredit whatever might be in this documentary. So Lifetime, as you know, is set to release this two-part documentary on Saturday and Sunday, documenting, documenting the rise and fall of Wendy Williams since she left her daytime talk show and as she was preparing to do this new podcast. Well, according to an exclusive from TMZ, they're reporting that Wendy Williams' guardian is suing A&E and is trying to halt the release of this documentary. So TMZ writes this in regards to this lawsuit. They said, Wendy Williams' guardian just filed a lawsuit against Lifetime's parent company, and the timing is nothing short of suspicious because there's a doc about her from, from them coming out. A woman named Sabrina Morrissey, they haven't been wanting to say her guardian, the guardian's name in these other interviews, probably for legal reasons. But according to TMZ, they said a woman by the name of Sabrina Morrissey, who says she's acting in her capacity as a temporary guardian of WWH, presumably Wendy Williams Hunter, just filed suit against A&E television networks, but she did it under seal, meaning the public can't peep what exactly she's running to court for. In the docs obtained by TMZ, there are a few clues that could indicate what this might be about, and all signs seem to point to some connection to where is Wendy Williams, the two-part doc, dropping on Saturday. Morrissey is also seeking a temporary restraining order in her action. Again, that's often the mechanism used when someone wants a judge to step in and halt the release of a film or television product project. Considering the doc's release date is just a couple of days away, that would make sense, although it's impossible to tell for sure with the docs being under seal. Now, what's interesting in the docs here is that the judge actually ordered all the docs to remain temporarily under seal and set a hearing date for next week to determine whether they should stay that way as the case plays out. So, of course, the Wendy doc drops this weekend, and while the hearing on the ceiling issue, it falls after the release date, it's possible the court could rule on the merit of what Morrissey is asking for, namely injunctive relief against A&E, while the docs are temporarily sealed. No word yet on a ruling on that front. So according to TMZ, they reached out to Morrissey and A&E for comment. No word back from Morrissey. However, A&E told, uh, told TMZ that they had no comment. I guess we will have to continue to wait and see if this documentary will actually air on Saturday. However, as I said to you guys before, I'm very suspicious as to why The Guardian is doing anything that they can in order to stop this documentary. Is this documentary going to reveal something that a lot of people have been suspicious about? Who exactly is making these decisions on Wendy Williams' behalf, especially if it's not her own son or anyone in her family? And what Alex mentioned in this interview, and apparently Alex's mom, also Wanda, Wendy Williams' sister, says in the documentary there was a point where the family was involved in, in communication with The Guardian, and then all of a sudden in 2022, I think it was like April of 2022, when all communication with them halted. There have been a lot of reports and stories out there about just the wrong people around Wendy Williams. They haven't named specifically anyone. I know Wendy, in a previous video that she had posted on socials when she was still with her son, Kevin Hunter Jr., that she accused her former manager of using her credit card to almost trying trying to put her in this guardianship. My thing is that I've been asking questions about my money. 
And when I began asking questions about my money, suddenly Lori Schiller has got no response regarding my money. I want my money, this is not fair. And Wells Fargo has no questions and answers with regarding my money. This is, this is not fair. And Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo have this guardianship petition about keeping me away from my money. This is not right. And you know this is not fair. And this guy named Bernie Young, I know for a fact that Bernie Young used my American Express card to hire an attorney to file a petition against me. That was done with my American Express card. Bernie Young, you're no good. And this is not fair at all, you know? And then there's this person, um, this, uh, oh gosh, this, uh, a former, a former doctor, a former doctor, okay, had medical information about me that I never even got. It was sent over to Lori Schiller. So I haven't gotten the stuff. I fired the, the doctor. And again, all I wanna know is where is my money? This is not right. And certainly, this is not fair. This is not fair. You know, Wells Fargo has used all this stuff to create the guardianship over me. This is not right. And certainly this is not fair. The New York court system is, they, you know, uh, without evidence, they're being weird to me, this court system. Without evidence, uh, they took all this information and continued with what's going on with me based on what Wells Fargo is doing. This is not fair, this is not fair, you know? And the New York court, the New York court is treating me like they did in, do you remember Kung Fu judge case? Do you remember that Kung Fu judge case? That's not right and that is not fair. Lori Schiller, Bernie Young, and Wells Fargo. Please let me have access to my money. This is not right. And again, this is not fair. Have a pleasant day. Thank you. So there's a lot of suspicious behavior around this, and I think it's necessary for the public to see this documentary, to keep talking about the situation, because we saw what happened with Britney Spears, but we also saw how Britney Spears was able to win and get free from this guardianship. Do I believe that there's some medical dementia or aphasia going on? Look, I don't know what could be going on. Clearly, Wendy Williams is not in the best place with her physical health. However, her family needs to have a role in her care. They should be the ones making the decision. Not some, someone that benefits from her being under this guardianship. Sabrina Morrissey is paid by Wendy Williams to make these decisions on her behalf. And if you haven't seen the I Care A Lot movie on Netflix, it might be a movie that you would watch this weekend because it lets you know that Wendy Williams' story is not just her story. There are other people that don't have the same public, public figure status or money that she does. However, they are still being controlled by people that are taking advantage of them. We're going to continue to follow this story, but as always, guys, we want to know your thoughts in the comment section. 
Let's continue this conversation on social media and make sure that Wendy Williams is protected. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. You bring the lighter, I got the fuse. You make a fire.